Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So just here for another one of our Tuesday mass making sessions. So if you wanted to join me this week for our mass making session, I'm going to be making, um, you know, these little fold out booklets um, in bulk. I have got a tutorial on how to make these um, further down in my uh, videos. So, you know, I'll try and remember to link that below, although I may well forget. Um, but I will be obviously going over how I make them during this video. So if you're planning on making some of these with me, all you're going to need is some paper, um, you know, be that your A4 papers, maybe some 12 by 12s, maybe some coffee dyed paper, um, some scissors, some glue. And then if you're likely to want to decorate yours, you may want to have some string and some you know bits and pieces to kind of pop on the front you may want to use some book pages or some sheet music things like that um and maybe your corner rounder and that's probably all we're going to need and this is the little booklet that i'm going to kind of endeavor to make in bulk so if you're um crafting along then grab your stash pockets I mean the reason I'm kind of focusing on things like this mainly is because these are the things that I find pretty um, time consuming to make per journal so again I've just brought along a bunch of stuff here with me so you know we can um, play around with with all these pieces of paper so what I'm going to do is grab first of all my kind of straightforward ones you know that I know roughly where I'm going with them and then we'll see what we can do you know maybe with some scraps and things like that if there's time so first of all I've just got a sheet of um, my secret garden kit and I've got some coffee dyed just plain copy paper and I'm going to just stick them together you know obviously there is a tutorial on how to do these so you know i appreciate that this is just a repeat of sorts um but obviously you know if we're going to be doing these kinds of things we need to you know do them from scratch so you know i apologize that it is a repeat and um yeah you know obviously you may be creating something different a different project in bulk but this is what I'm planning on doing today is making a bunch of these so I'm just going to trim it down so it's not quite so large and then as per you know when I did the tutorial I'm just going to glue the two pieces together <clears throat> you know so we've got that nice kind of squidgy effect so try and get as close as I can to the edges and then I'm just going to do a bunch of glue you know just around on the inside just so it's not got too many you know air bubbles and what have you so. and straight away I've realized my mistake because straight away I'm looking around everywhere thinking where's my my spreading card you know my uh my Starbucks reward card that I like to keep for this type of thing. Can't see it anywhere. Let me see whether I have another card anywhere. Right, grabbed another card now. So spread that out. So obviously if you watch my tutorials, you'll know that for these, I like to stick two sheets together. So as per the last video where I decided to try and be a little bit more efficient, I'm going to stick with that and try and do all of my gluing, you know, gluing of sheets together, you know, in one hit before moving on to, you know, other aspects of the pocket. So again, I'm just going to trim this down roughly. You know, it doesn't matter because we're going to tidy these up anyway. So just trim that down there. I'll move that first one to the side. Just, I mean, actually, what I should have done was probably just trim them all down and then do all the gluing. But hopefully, kind of as the weeks go by, we're going to get more and more efficient um, in our methods. And, you know, we'll be racing through these items by the end. <laughs> That's... Um, 
That's hoping, isn't it? I told my son, you know, what I was doing here, you know, with these videos once a week. I mean, he looked so unimpressed. It's unbelievable. I think he just thought, wow, that is dull, you know, beyond the imagination, <laughs> beyond the realms of dullness. He kind of couldn't believe it. So, um, I don't think he thought it was a very good idea for for a you know weekly weekly video but we'll see as I say I mean I'm trying to film these a bit ahead so you know time will tell whether or not these are going to be successful now this one I thought I'd actually glue the two the two blues together this is from my grand lazuli kit and straight away I've forgotten to trim it down now, because this has got a piece running through the middle, I might take oh, take a bit off the top and the bottom. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I'm not worrying at all because I will obviously, um, you know, neaten them up in a moment so as you can see this is where I've obviously printed previously so please excuse the printing that's going on inside you know on the other side of the, the sheets that I'm using so this um, Grand Lazuli this one I have coffee dyed um, you know previously so that's why in the way it is actually stuck that the wrong way round. I didn't make a good job of cutting it, so but I did notice it was going narrower on one end than the other, so just again, you know, neaten that up. This one, which again I thought I will um, have it with the you know coordinating paper on the inside, so I'm just going to trim that down there. So, and finally, my new ink pad and my or new ink pads and my new ink. My sorry, they're my blending tool sponge things, you know, and my distress ink pad. Finally, they've arrived. So, hopefully, there'll be no stopping me now. I'll be able to, you know, get distressing things and all sorts. So, they're really prepped in my. Um, in my supplies. I still haven't decided how I'm going to store all of these pieces that I'm making. So again, still, you know, still would love to hear how you guys are going to store your, you know, bulk embellishments or your bulk pieces that we're making. I mean, so far I've just got them on the side, the ones that we've made so far in a pile, because I was waiting, obviously, for my my inks to arrive. So, um, you know, I haven't really touched them at all. I've just left them. Just left them there. And I'll just take the top off of this. And I'm just backing this one onto the pretty beetroot stained paper oh my gosh my glue is just oozing out I don't know why that's happening get my wipe maybe I didn't do it up tight enough I think I did but never mind it's a new glue because um obviously I was having troubles with my with my other glue clogging up so although I haven't finished it yet I didn't want to come on here being really annoying with the glue so I'll use that up when I'm not filming. There we go. Okay. 
So I've been making a list of the things that we can do in bulk on a Tuesday. Um, so I've got quite a few things on the list. So, you know, hopefully this will keep going for several several weeks. Um, I mean, as I say, I am filming these ahead. So, you know, as of filming this, I have not loaded a single one um, or, you know, released a single one. So it may be <laughs> that already by this point, in filming I'm already seeing that actually there is no call for this and um, you know they are not going to be something that will be worth pursuing but you know hopefully that's not going to be the case and hopefully you know we all will find these quite handy videos so um, you know or handy sessions that we're going to do so this piece of coffee dyed paper I might just glue two together so that I've got, you know, a plain piece. So I'm just picking the best way round for the paper. Just again, trim it down slightly. You know, because I think it's quite good to have a few neutral pieces as well um, in our supplies. So. Glue that together, sandwich it together. Oops, like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, depending on how these videos are going, you know, I have got, yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of plans for uh, things that we can make in bulk. So, you know, hopefully these are going to be. I mean, I know, obviously, they're not riveting videos to watch, but, you know, hopefully they are going to spur us all on to to get making in a really efficient way, um, you know, which is something that I generally don't normally do. So, you know, hopefully, even if they're not the most riveting videos, they're going to be somehow of use, you know. So that's those. Now I'm just going to pop these things to one side and I'm just going to have a go at making one or two from some sheet music. So again, I'm just going to take my sheet music. Now this is pretty old, it's, you know, vintage. I'm going to trim it down because obviously as you can see it's pretty tatty, but I'm going to trim it on this end because I like these, um, oh my mind's gone blank. What are those things called? You know, at the start of a music line. Oh, my mind's gone completely blank. I know that probably loads of you are shouting at the uh, video saying exactly what they're called. They're not the treble clef, are they? I don't know. I can't remember now what they're called. But anyway, I do really like the appearance of those. So I'm going to try and, um, you know, have that side intact. Now, I quite also like it, you know, where they've been torn out and you've got that raggedy kind of edge. So again, I'm just going to try them like that and see how they turn out. Now, you know, they may turn out nice, they may turn out awful, but this is, you know, what we're doing here, isn't it? We're just experimenting, seeing what works and then what, what works and is worth repeating, you know, um, which is obviously very different sometimes to, you know, what has worked, but we might not actually like it. So, all just a big experiment, really. So, that's that piece. Now, let me just count how many I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm just seeing whether I've got some book page here that I could make a couple of tiny baby ones. Um, so let's just, just make a couple of tiny ones here. So again, I mean, obviously this is vintage book page and um, you know, it's a little bit delicate. So just being a little bit careful how I put this together. Now, obviously, I haven't experimented around with this. I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know what kind of um, 
uh, you know, pocket this is going to make because obviously, you know, this book page is pretty tiny. So it may be that it doesn't really work. You know, it's not really successful. So we will see. You know, again, it's just just a case of experimenting, really, because, you know, if they turn out really nice and I quite like them, then I'll know to make some more. Right, let's turn that a little bit at the top. I was hoping I had some more of those encyclopedia pages because they're quite big. And I could have obviously made some more. Well, what I could do is back that onto some of the sheet music. So let's see how this one goes. So, oops, again, just glue around. I mean, just, you know, a really great way to use up lots of um stash here and build up you know lots of pieces so not only are we using up you know supplies but we're also um you know building up our ready-made supplies as well in the same you know in the same vein so just spread that out like that if I've got anything else laying around on my desk that would just lend itself, you know, ideally for this. Uh, hold on. Do I have any other book page laying around there? No, I don't think I have. Oh, what have I got? So then I've got my 12 by 12 pages. Now, these are quite thick. So I may actually save these to do some other pockets because obviously, you know, I'm not sure how brilliantly these would be. Um, well, to be fair, they actually, they probably would work okay. But what I'm going to do then, so, right. I'm going to take this one, which is a double-sided page. Now, because this is quite thick, it's obviously considerably thicker than, um, you know, scrapbook paper. So what I'm going to do here, let me just check that I am. What I'm going to do here is just chop it down like that and I can make the pocket straight away. I don't need to double the paper up. I can just literally make the pocket straight out of this. So if I just decide which way round I want it, do I want it the stripe side or the music sheet side? And then I'm going to fold it in half you know, because I haven't actually worked with a 12 by 12 sheet to do these types of pockets. So I just want to kind of check what sort of size pieces they will make. And actually, it seems like it's going to work pretty well. So again, just take that in there. Oops. And can you see the reason why I've used the double sided is because straight away, you know, inside it's patterned. So, you know, I don't have to really do anything to that. I'm going to trim it down, you know, to a good size that I think looks nice. Like that. And then I'm going to glue that straight away. Like that. So, I mean, actually, these are quite a good pocket for your double-sided 12 by 12 papers. So, you know, if you've got some decent-sized scraps of double-sided 12 by 12s, you know, that's quite thick. Because those 12 by 12 papers do vary, you know, in in their um, thickness, don't they? I mean, I don't know what GSM this is, but it's, it's quite thick. Um, you know, it's just perfect for these types of things. So that's my first one done. So there we go. Let me see if I've got any other double-sided paper with me. Okay, I have. So I've got this one now. For the junk journals, I probably prefer this side of the paper. So again, if I just cut it down to the sort of size that I'd like it. Now 
Now this one's slightly thinner, so I could, you know, pop some um, book page on the inside of this because it's quite thinnish. So I might do that. Just going to, oops, glue that down. Again, you know, these are just pieces of paper that were no longer in their paper pads, so I couldn't really tell you. I think, I think this was a K and Company paper. I couldn't tell you what, you know, what paper range it was from or anything because I had it just in my cupboard for a really long time. But it is thinner than that other one, so I'm just going to put that roughly, you know, where the centre is. Again, I'll just spread that out slightly. And the reason I've done that is because, you know, I mean, obviously I bought these papers when I was scrapbooking and so I loved the double sided paper and I loved all these colours. Obviously now I make more junk journals really rather than scrapbooks, you know, I might not necessarily want this colour on the inside, that would kind of distract me. So that's why I've, you know, <clears throat> lined the inside that you're going to see with the book page. So again, and I fold them uh, you know, in the wrong way, basically, so that when I fold my pockets in, I can see really nice and easily, you know, where I want the pockets. So, if I'd folded it in the other way, I would then find it quite hard to get my edges lined up. I hope that makes sense. So, when I then fold it in the other way, which is now going to be a problem because this is glued down but hopefully it's going to be fine there we go so like that and like that so again I'm just going to trim this down slightly because you know obviously I didn't make a particularly great job of cutting it cut it down there Really need much coming off the top but it's just slightly overhanging there and then again I'm just going to go straight for it and glue my flaps down Again, I'll just do this one. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you know, I'm not saying that this is <laughs> making much of a dent in my stash because obviously I have got an awful lot of things in my stash, but you know, it's a start, isn't it? So um, hopefully, you guys are also finding that. So just trim that up again because again it wasn't brilliant and I haven't made a brilliant job of trimming that down That's a bit better right so again there's another one and you know again at this point you might like to you know round your corners off you know you might want to leave them square but you may want to round them you may want to just round, you know, like the back corners, but leave the front corners straight. Um, you know, not straight, but square. Um, you know, completely up to you. I'll just do that one separately because it wasn't really lining up very well. But, you know, that's another piece now, just ready in my stash, ready to go. So, and I quite like that with the, the book page in the middle. So again, that's my second one. So should we do another one like that? Which actually we could then in that case use just a piece of the scrapbook paper and line it with the book page in there. So I'll just take this one here with the diagonal lines. And 
again. Let me just actually see. This is where I find I haven't got any book page. But if I haven't, I will just use some sheet music. So I'm just rummaging through my desk. Excuse me for a minute. <coughs> no, I don't think I have, would you believe? I mean, I, I'm sure I have, but, you know, my desk's such a mess. I obviously can't see any. So it's just buried somewhere. So let me get my sheet music back. Oops, I, I put it there. So again, just tear out another piece. And then just cut that down roughly. Just so it's obviously a bit easier to stick in. I don't need to worry so much about these torn edges on this because nobody's going to be seeing it. So. Just a good covering with the glue. And I mean, obviously, you know, although these maybe don't look particularly great so far, the whole point is, you know, we've not decorated these. We've not done anything with them. So I'm now covered in glue because it's oozing out of my bottle. Um, you know, so although they don't look great at the moment, you know, they would obviously then be all ready for decorating and would hopefully then look great once they're decorated. So, you know, that's the whole point. So there's that piece. Now this one, I may have to just fold this straight in because the reason I'm going to do that is the sheet music's quite um, brittle, you know, because it's vintage and uh, must be the type of paper that it's made from, I think, but it's, it's actually quite brittle. So I'm not sure that it would overly like me, you know, folding it in. See already, it's not really wanting to play the game too brilliantly page works better but you know that's fine so again just fold your pocket in roughly where you want it I might have to trim the sheet music from here so, so that I can just see where the top is to line it up here it's much easier when you do it you know in the other way because you really can then see you know to make sure they're lined up nicely at the edges so I haven't done too bad a job of that but obviously it would have been better if it was you know in the other way so there we go and again I mean unfortunately that is quite creased um, but you know Never mind, these are not um, supposed to be, you know, perfect works of art. They are, they're supposed to be an eclectic kind of mix, aren't they, really, for our junk journals. So um, I'm sure that they're good enough. So there's that one. And again, just do that one. Right, so I'm going to check in a second how much time we're up to. Because, um, you know, I'm aware that last time I did say that what we'll do is aim to kind of make a bunch and then hopefully, you know, decorate one. So, there's that one. I'm going to have to take that in slightly more because... Um, making a good job of cutting today. Must be having a, a bad cutting day. You know like people have bad hair days while well, I'm having a bad cutting day so and talking of hair I mean lucky I'm not a hairdresser because uh, you wouldn't want to be having a bad cutting day then would you? You certainly wouldn't want to be the person going to the hairdresser who was having a bad cutting day so I never go to the hairdressers never. Um, 
my hair's really boring. I don't really do anything exciting with it. Um, you know, I have in the past done, I mean, nothing exciting, but, you know, obviously when I was a child and it was all the rage to have perms, I had a perm, um, or, you know, had several perms. Um, I think the shortest I've ever had it was kind of shoulder length. I haven't really ever gone shorter than that, so I'm not brave at all. Um, I did dye it very dark once. Um, well, I kept it like that, you know, for a couple of years. Not really too sure that it overly suited me, to be honest, but, you know. I just wanted to have a change, really. Um, I had it highlighted for years, and then after doing it dark, I decided that actually... Right, I'm just going to start cutting down my other ones that I've made now. Um, yeah, I had it highlighted for years and then went dark thinking that would be easier, you know, to just be able to do it myself from home and, you know, I went from kind of one extreme to the other so it was really, 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 really dark. And um, I'd been out for the day with the kids and it was during the holidays, my husband got home from work he thought I was wearing a wig. I said, oh, hi, from the top of the stairs. And he honestly thought I was wearing a wig because obviously it had gone from being quite blonde in the morning to almost black when he got home from work. Um, not sure what he thought to it, to be honest, but you know, who cares really, it wasn't his hair. Um, but yeah, the only thing was, I'd never dyed my hair myself before because I'd only ever had it highlighted, you know, at the hairdressers. And, um, oh, I did not make a very good job of, um, now you see that's cracked there because that's very brittle. So not great. But, you know, again, we can just cover that up with some lace or something. So I'm going to go for this this way round because that's happened. And then, you know, when I come to use this, I'll obviously have to, you know, cover that up a bit with some some trim of some kind. There we go. Right. Um, yeah, I because I'd never dyed my hair before, I really didn't make a very good job of it, obviously, at the back. So I had to then send my husband out to the supermarket to buy another, um, you know, packet of dye to be able to go back over the back again because I made it really patchy. It was obviously kind of very dark with blonde, you know, patches. It looked a bit like a, um, you know, a badger or something like that. So it wasn't great. But I did persevere and kept it like that for quite a long time because, um, you know, I mean, obviously for a start, I couldn't really just suddenly change it back that easily. Uh, then decided actually that was more work really than having it highlighted because oh it was just a bit a bit of a big job really trying to dye it myself um you know it resulted in the bathroom being all messy because obviously my hair would kind of flick around everywhere and yeah just wasn't really great so i probably kept it like it for a couple of years and um then i thought oh i'll just leave it and see what happens that must be about seven years ago, I think, now. So a really long time. I've just now had it, you know, its natural colour now. Um, which, you know, is much better because it's obviously, you know, dead easy. I don't need to do anything. I mean, the only thing is, is obviously, you know, age is kind of approaching. You know, well, age is approaching. Obviously, age is always approaching. But, um, you know, older older age kind of you know as I'm aging the grey hairs are coming through and um, yeah it will come to a point where I won't really be able to get away with just having it its natural colour well unless I don't mind the grey um, but I probably would rather not have the grey so you know eventually it will come to the point where I'll have to do something with it again so whether or not I will um, get it highlighted or something like that certainly in the first instance to try and cover up some of the grey but I'm putting that off as long as I can because obviously you know I can't really be bothered to go to the hairdressers if I'm truthful so as regards to having my hair cut 
my mum just trims it for me. Um, you know, when I'm at her house occasionally, I'll just say, oh, mum, can you just trim off the bottom of my hair? Because, you know, it gets to the point where it's quite tangly and quite knotty at the bottom. And that's how I know it needs a trim. So she does that. I mean, it's quite regularly I, I get her to do it. Um, and then more recently, I hadn't got my mum to trim it for absolutely ages. Right, again, we're going to have the same problem here with the cracking. So I just need to be aware of that and take a bit more care. Um, so I hadn't got my mum to do it for absolutely ages. And I kept meaning to get her to do it and kept forgetting. So I got my son to do it, my 12-year-old. <laughs> I just kind of said, oh, you know, can you give it a trim? He felt a bit nervous, I think, doing it. But I said, oh, don't worry too much. You know, I'm sure you can't go too far wrong. Um... So he did, and he didn't make too bad a job of it. I mean, literally, it's just straight hair. I mean, it's just, you know, completely straight. So it's nothing too complicated, says she, who, um, you know, <laughs> struggles to do anything that requires a bit of precision. So, but yeah, he made a pretty good job of it. So uh, that might be his new new job now. Not, not career, I don't mean, but, you know, his new job with me, cutting my hair kind of once every five or six weeks and I just trim the sides I kind of just hack at the sides and the fringe and you know just generally yeah just generally kind of hack at it the same as I do really in my journals so uh, but it's great because obviously I don't then have to endure going to the hairdressers which is just you know it's quite expensive and obviously takes up quite a bit of time doesn't it so uh, it's better you know, for me, I prefer not having to go. Right, this is that plain one that we did. So exactly the same method. I've given up now on doing them, you know, folding them in the wrong way because, um, you know, I managed to do it okay with the others although now as I'm saying it I'm just doing this one like that because um you know sometimes I'm likely to make a worse job than others okay so although this one looks incredibly plain because obviously it is just plain um you know I can stamp this up and do things with this to make it decorative and um you know it then has scope for gluing things on it so that's why I thought let's just have a completely plain one and you know, see see how that is. And then, you know, when I come to start using these pieces, if I do, I mean, I'm saying this, but I have mentioned this before. I just suspect that these are just going to get, you know, cast aside and I'll still make specific things for a journal. But I am going to try and, you know, make use of these things. Um, yeah. As I come to use them, I will then see what worked best. Is it best to just have a bunch of completely plain pieces? Because then I really can, you know, pull them out for any journal. Is that going to be, you know, what proves best? And again, I've just cut into that slightly too much. So I'm just going to re-glue that down there. I think that side's okay, I know. Yeah, so. Okay, so that's that piece. Yeah, so time will tell which of these methods is, you know, more useful to have just a bunch of plain ones or, you know, have a mixture or whatever, you know. Um, time will tell really, so. Again, just like this. And as I'm making them, I'm obviously getting much more sloppy in my methods because I'm not even trimming them down now. I'm just um, just straight away folding them in and then trimming them afterwards. So you know. It's worth bearing in mind that that's all perfectly fine to do it that way you know I mean really 
because we're doing this mass making, you know, it's just whatever works out most efficient and fastest for you. You know, different people have different things that work for them, don't they? So, right, I need to trim this bottom bit off. So, just need to be aware of that and put the glue, you know, quite a bit so that when I trim it off, hopefully I haven't completely opened my pocket up again. And obviously the same with this side because what comes off of one will come off of the other. So again, just quite generous with the glue there. Like that. Oops, I smudged that or oh, done something with that at the top. Just trim that bottom bit down. Yeah, I've always had quite long hair and um, as a child I had really long hair, I could sit on it, um, you know, as a small child, probably up to about the age of ooh, 10 or 11 perhaps, or, yeah, probably about, I don't know, 9, 10, 11, something like that, I could actually sit on my hair, it was incredibly long, um, and then, you know, as I kind of grew older, obviously I had it trimmed and cut and I think I went to about you know just above my elbows and then you know when you when you're in your teens you know well then I think I had it in a bob um, and then then I had the dreaded perm so I mean I had lots of perms because obviously it was kind of the um, you know the time of Kylie and Jason and neighbours and all of that you know good stuff so uh, it was very fashionable at the time to have the permed hair and you know all of that so I had it like that for quite a long time and I mean perms they're such a great idea aren't they but sadly you know mine just never went quite how I'd hoped I always thought I was going to come out with these bouncing ringlets and you know invariably perms didn't really give you that effect did they well, certainly they didn't they didn't give me that effect so uh, it was a shame because uh, you know they're such a brilliant idea aren't they but the curls just don't have the same effect quite as people with naturally curly hair I mean I would have loved curly hair but you know in fairness my daughter has curly hair Oh my gosh, what a nightmare. It's a bit of an eye-opener for somebody with really straight hair because <laughs> her hair's a bit of a nightmare to um, control and keep on top of. So literally, we wash her hair, you know, once a week. I instantly put it into plaits, you know, no mucking about. It's just, come on, straight away, let's plait it. And I put it in two plaits and it stays like that. Normally for the whole week, um, you know, we just wash her hair kind of once a week if we can get away with it. And um, yeah, I just leave it in the two plaits for the whole week and gradually it gets obviously more and more messy through the week, but that's how we leave it because she hates having her hair done. I hate doing it, um, you know, and obviously because it's completely different hair to mine, I'm I struggle quite a bit, you know, with doing it because it's very knotty, it's, you know, it's just a bit of a nightmare. But having said that, it's awesome hair, you know. Um, I mean, it's quite funny when she's in the bath and things and it's wet, you know. I mean, it comes right down to her waist, but obviously as soon as it dries, it just pings back up. And, you know, the drier it gets or the longer that goes by since it's been dried, the shorter it gets. So it's quite... Um, it's quite funny seeing curly hair when you've got straight hair so yeah but I mean it's lovely hair um, you know she's lucky that she's got such cute curly hair but yeah I do quite often say to her oh my gosh wouldn't it be nice when you can do your own hair 
because I mean sometimes she's screaming and carrying on you know and then my husband will come in and say what's going on what's going on and I'm just like I'm just trying to wash her hair you know so hence why we just put it in the two plaits and that's it then it's just in the two plaits for the week I mean her hair looks super cute if I put it up in that high ponytail you know because it's all curly and it just goes like a big curly bun on the top kind of thing oh it looks gorgeous absolutely gorgeous but it's just not really worth it because um we then just have such a saga when it comes to then actually you know brushing it again that to be honest it's best just in the plaits so yeah very boring when it comes to things like that um, so um but yeah, it will be great when she can do it herself. She will, oh, well, she will love it. And I will love it, obviously. Because um, she surely doesn't love me doing it. That's, that's one thing that's for definite. And yeah, I definitely don't like doing it. So, um, and nobody else likes listening to her having it done. So, so it's just going to be a relief all round once she can do it herself. Right, because this has been coffee dyed, this is a bit tricky to fold, you know, because it's um, kind of resistant really a bit to the folding. So, and where it's been doubled up especially. So that's why I was just having a little bit of trouble there. So again, I'm just going to kind of glue it, you know, quite a bit so that when I trim it in a minute, hopefully I'm not going to actually trim into where it's stuck down. So. This side. So, trim off this bit at the bottom. And I might not need to actually trim it anywhere else. Just trim it slightly there. Okay, so that's that one. Yeah, I would love to hear what um, projects that you are working on. I know I've said this, you know, each time, but, you know, I'm intrigued. Are you working on the same... I'm just wondering which way I cut that, whether I cut the top or the bottom. Oh, I can't remember now. Um, whether you're working on the same thing as me or whether you're working on something else or, you know, something else entirely or whether you're mass making but doing other mass making projects. This is going to just, um, you know, die a death and not really be a very successful weekly video, you know. I don't know. I mean, as I say, I'm going to love having all these things ready made, hopefully. You know, and hopefully some of you are going to feel that way as well. glue just coming off of my hands now because I'm a bit covered in glue so again just going to kind of put quite a bit of glue on there because obviously I've got to trim this down so. and then I'm on my last one after this you'll be pleased to know so I will stand up in a second have a look and just check how much time we've got left because um, you know we're hopefully going to have time to decorate one like we talked about in the last one so Okay. Just trim this down and just trim that across the top. Okay, and we'll just trim it across the bottom. Okay. And again, you know, obviously these can then you can have string around them, you can, you know, paper clip them together, you know, however you want really. We're just making the foundation so that the, you know, the boring part is done. And I'm a bit like a scratch record because I've said all this before, but I guess I'm saying it because anyone who's just joining, you know, for the first time and is thinking what's going on here, 
then um, it might be useful to know what is going on here. So that's why I'm constantly repeating myself. Uh oh, I folded that in too far. So, I mean, it's quite, you know, forgiving if you folded in too much. You know, you can adjust it slightly. I find by using the copy paper at least and the, um, you know, uh, doubling up the kind of copy paper pieces. Now, obviously, that sheet music it's quite brittle, so that's not going to be half as forgiving as this is. But this one is, um, you know, this method is proving to be pretty good for any adjustments that need to then be be made to your folds. So that's that bit. And then we'll do this piece here. Okay. Okay. So I'll just trim this down slightly. So, I mean, I have mucked up the alignment of this one, but to be honest, you know, I don't think it really matters too much. It's not kind of standing out like a sore thumb. And actually, you know, it maybe even adds a little something to it. So, I don't think it's a problem. If you see, you know, it's just slightly misaligned at the edge, but, you know, I don't think that really matters. Right, I'm just looking at the time. Wow, it's like... 50 minutes so I'm going to super quickly decorate one so we've done one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yay so we have done our twelve that you know was hoping to do so I'm wondering which one to decorate now, do we want to go for one of the sheet music ones? Because they're the ones that we've obviously got the problem with the the seam. So let's do that because then hopefully we can just have a look at how to overcome that kind of, um, you know, thing happening maybe to your pieces. So I'm going to start by inking it up. So let me just grab in a piece of paper, you know, as a sort of scrap piece to lean on which now I cannot find anywhere bear with me just grab a piece here okay so I'm just going to lean on that while I'm inking and then I'm just going to bring in a couple of things that we can decorate this up with so you know I'm just again grabbing rubbish from around my desk so I'm really not you know worrying too much what I'm choosing or anything like that I'm just randomly choosing some stuff so I've got that I've also got this which I wonder whether so let's try I we could have this on here that there we could have this little piece here and obviously really haven't got time to overthink this because um, you know I mean as I said in the last episode unfortunately these are turning out to not be really possible in the 35 or you know the 30 to 45 minutes if we're going to then be decorating one up as well in particular but you know I'm hoping that that's going to be okay with you guys and you're not really going to mind. I have got this blue flower here. Again, I'm just grabbing rubbish that just happens to be on my desk. So, you know, my desk ephemera that proves to be endlessly helpful has just, you know, come in handy yet again today. So, uh, oh, just love it. Can never have enough. Never have enough desk ephemera. Oh, that looks so pretty, doesn't it, already? And I'm just wondering whether I could cut this butterfly out. Again, I've just got a piece of bingo card here, so I wonder whether we can have that cut out. 
coming out somewhere. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? I'll just cut this butterfly out. Yeah, um, so I wonder how many pieces that you guys have made, you know, have you been making the same things? If you have, how many did you achieve? Did you achieve more than 12? You know, <laughs> not that it's a competition, not that we're all pressured to be, oh, you know, must make this many or anything. I'm just interested, that's all. Um, and interested what you have been making, you know, you maybe will give me some ideas for future. Um episodes as I say I have written down a whole bunch of ideas so I have got quite a few ideas to you know get started with or you know to keep us going for a little while so hopefully you know I'm not going to really be struggling for inspiration too much not for a little while anyway maybe I prefer that just like that actually so I'll just pop this piece down here Like that. Just pop this bingo card down in there, like that. Just pop this piece down. Oops, like that. I love that bright blue colour, don't you? It's just such a pretty colour. I mean I just am always drawn to colour I have to say so um, yeah for me I just love you know the touch of that blue it's just gorgeous. So I might do it like that and then it's linking to that little flower but what I'm going to do first I think is just ink this up. Now I've got a new ink pad here and sometimes their juiciness varies so I just bear that in mind and won't overly you know dip it in too much because um just in case it's a really juicy one it's my first time of using it doesn't seem too bad they go from one extreme to another you know sometimes you get them and they're so juicy that i end up spoiling everything that i touch with it for the first few uses so um you know that's probably not great either but this one seems kind of uh middling although actually that looked a bit dark didn't it but again some paper obviously picks it up more than others so that's another thing to just bear in mind right that's that piece like that so I'm just going to take some lace here And then what I'm going to do is, again, I'm just still persevering with that fabric glue. Just run that down the edge like that. And then just check I've got this up the right way. Just going to stick that down there. Press it down with my wipe. I mean, I'm covered in glue anyway, to be honest, so I don't know quite why, why it matters, but just, I guess, to um, avoid any extra glue. And just press it down at the back, like that. So that's just helping to reinforce that, just where those cracked folds, you know, where that cracked fold is. So, you know, then I'm going to pop this on, I might pop that on some lace. And then the little flower kind of there. So again, let me just pull in that lace again. Let's trim that around. And I had cut that butterfly out, but I'm not sure I'm going to use that. So, oops, nearly, nearly stuck that upside down. So that's not good. Just stick that there. I want it kind of covering the bottom of that bingo card. 
just going to use the hot glue because that's just really nice and quick. So, like that. And then I'm just going to pop that flower on, probably over the lace or under the lace? Probably over the lace actually. So, again, I'm just going to hot glue that down because then that's, you know, acting as glue for the lace as well. So, there we go really pretty and then I think this might be too wide this piece actually but we'll see again you know I've just grabbed something that happened to be just laying around on my desk wide but what I could do actually is cut it cut it down so I'll cut into the border a bit hopefully that will then be narrow enough it might still not be you know but about fits literally tight fit but you know it does fit so then again you know these are not folds these are permanently folded so you know although obviously that has cracked as well it's hopefully not so essential to protect that because it's not going to be the opening fold so you know I will probably just leave those um this side seems slightly worse so you know could always kind of just pop some lace down on that side in fact I might do that because it looks quite pretty like that so again just trim that down again just use that fabric fabric glue pop that down like that and then this on the back Gosh, my desk is just severely running out of space these days, so I uh, don't know quite what's going on. I mean, it's always a mess, but I don't know why the mess is just spilling out on me. I noticed that Rachel on Moxie Creations, she sometimes says that she's then pushed out of her frame, really, because her stuff is so messy. That's a bit what's happening here. So I guess exactly what she means. Right, so there's our little pocket. And again, you know, Obviously, you may like to actually then tie it up with some string or something as a closure. So I've got some string here. Like that. Oops. And then, you know, I would just glue the string on the back and obviously then you know that's how that would be now again I haven't got a journal on the go at the moment so I'm just going to show you with this sheet how that would appear in your journals so that's your little pocket and then you know you'd undo it and open it out like that so super cute and you know really easy um you know and yeah we've now got 11 of them ready made and um, ready for decorating plus one that's you know completely done so i hope that you managed to achieve some things as well and um that you've kind of benefited from this this week's session and hopefully see you again um next week so thanks very much then and i'll see you all again soon thanks then bye